Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes, so and today we're going to be discussing the number one cause of digestive symptoms. Now about 10 to 15 percent of our population have been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. Now this is a very frustrating diagnosis because ultimately what it is is a diagnosis by exclusion. In other words, your medical doctor found that you don't have Crohn's, you don't have polyps or ulcers or any other type of pathology going on with your GI tract, so you kind of get low into this category of IBS. The other reason why it's so frustrating is there's not a whole lot that's given to you with what you can do for your IBS. Well, what's very exciting is the most recent research shows that there's a commonality between a lot of the people who have IBS. And that commonality is actually SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The research has found that about 78% of people with IBS actually have SIBO. So we have a lot of bacteria that live on us as well as in us. A lot of the bacteria that's in our GI tract is found, the most abundant amount of bacteria in your GI tract is found in your large intestine. Now in your small intestine, that's where we start absorbing all the nutrients that we get from our food. If you have some of that bacteria translocate or remove from your large intestine to your small intestine, that bacteria will start to ferment the food that you have there and it'll start eating a lot of the nutrients that you were supposed to be absorbing. Now it's a problem not only because you're no longer absorbing all those good nutrients from your food, but the bacteria can start growing and can start fermenting your food and that causes a lot of the IBS symptoms. For example, that fermentation will cause gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, GERD, or even all of the above. Now there are some things that you can do at home now in order to relieve a lot of the symptoms that you have from SIBO or IBS. One of the best diets out there for SIBO is actually called the FODMAP diet. It is really good at relieving a lot of the symptoms. However, if you want to take this one step further and actually get rid of the bacteria that's growing in your small intestine, you absolutely have to do this with herbal antimicrobials. That is what we do in our office. We help people feel relief through dietary changes and then we put them on antimicrobials in order to actually get to the root cause of their problem. Now if you found this video interesting or need extra help or more help for your digestive issues and digestive problems, please visit our website ibrainandbody.com slash digestive gut solution. Thank you.